Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, we're going to make a tree quilt. All we need is a layer cake in greens. and a layer cake in solids. A little brown for the stems, and a little red for sashing. So grab your supplies, and let's get started. Here's all you need for this quilt. You need at least 20 different green layer, layer cake pieces. These are 10 by 10. And you can use yardage if you want. You don't have to use a layer cake, but a layer cake is a really easy way to get a nice variety. You also need 10 inch squares in your background. Cut them yourself if you need to. This has 40. We're only gonna use 20 of those. You just need, even a jelly roll strip of a brown will do all of the stems for the trees and about 5 eighths of a yard of the red. We're gonna use that for sashing. And then you need your tree template. Let me show you how to get the template and the pattern. This is our website, jordanfabrics.com, and we have a tab here that says free patterns. So if you run your cursor down over, over that, all of them will show up, and I want ponderosa pine. So I'm gonna click on it, and there's the quilt. Now download the PDF, now you can see the pattern, and then you wanna print that off. Once you've got all the pages printed, you're gonna to wanna to take the tree applique page, which is the last one here, and that's what we're gonna to use to make our trees. So you can transfer this to plastic template material. You can just cut around it, whatever method works best for you. Let's pick out the greens we want to use for the trees. This pack has some greens and blues, and we wanna pick out the 20 that we would like to use for our trees. I'm probably not gonna use that one because it's really solid, but that would be good, that would be good. I like that, I like that. That one's a little too blue, that's way too blue. Now you could do some blue trees, there's no rule that says you can't, but I'm just going to be picking the greener ones and I'm gonna use the bluer ones for some other project. Here's the 20 greens that I've picked out. These will all make really interesting, nice trees. So since Hoffman folds these, I'm gonna press them nice and flat so I can cut the trees very accurately. I have four layers of fabric here, and that's a good amount for me to hand cut with my scissors. So my tree is gonna go right here. And even though these are cut straight, I like to cut this bottom edge off with my blade to make sure I have a really nice straight starting point. Now the bottom is cut really, really straight. So I'm gonna just put my template down here and I'm using a white chalk pencil. There's a lot of different kinds of marking tools, but this one works really well on these dark colors. And I'm drawing around the outside of the template. So when I cut, I'm gonna remember that and I'm gonna cut on the inside side of the lines. That way, even if I veer off here when I'm drawing, I know that I'm going to cut straight because I'm cutting on the inner side. So I like to start at the top here because I can cut both sides here nice and straight. And again, I'm cutting on the inside part of my drawn line. And then just keep moving around. I like to do those first. Then I'm gonna come over here and cut up here just to the point and then cut over. Keep going. Here's the trees, here's some stems. Now the numbers are on the pattern, but they're two inches by one and a quarter. And then these are my background squares, 10 inches. I could get it open there. And we are going to put the tree onto one of these guys. So you have a couple options here. You can measure up an inch and a half 
I happen to have a little ruler that is an inch and a half, so I like to just put that there. And this is gonna go right on the bottom there, and it's actually three quarters of an inch. Let's use the inch size. It's in three quarters of an inch from each side. You can eye that up even. And then we're going to put the stem underneath here. So the stem is going to be even with the bottom of the background. And I'm just going to double check that I've got it centered also, so. And all these numbers will be on the pattern, but that's all you have to do. Now, there's another product I like to use. This is a little glue pen for fabric and it, it won't gum up your machine. And I'm not gonna glue the whole thing on because I find that it's real easy to applique this without gluing it. But I'm gonna put a little on each of these corners, especially this side, they tend to move when I'm appliquing. And this, you can still take these off if you don't like your placement. This isn't a permanent glue, but it helps hold it in place while you stitch. So I'm just gonna put some little dots down and this will work instead of pins. Now it's all ready to sew. I'm going to be using my little Singer machine which has a zigzag stitch on it. So I can adjust the stitch that I use on this machine. It's got a lot of different stitches, but I'm just using the regular zigzag and I'm doing almost a satin stitch. So I've got it really, really tight. So there's a lot of stitching. Um, if you use other methods for your appliques, for instance, if you fuse this onto your background, you can use some of these decorative stitches. You could use a blanket stitch, but if you're just going to put it onto the fabric like I have, you wanna have a really tight stitch. Now you also need some sort of stabilizer. There's a lot of specialty products. There's something called stitch and tear, but I'm just using copy paper. Copy paper, I always have it and it works just great. So I'm gonna put that right behind the tree here and you can see the copy paper isn't quite as wide as my tips. But if I turn it a little, I can get the whole tree on here. Even both tips and the top there. And there's paper behind everywhere I'm going to stitch now. I'm gonna start stitching at this point here and go all the way around the tree. Now, some people like to do that stem first, but I think it's best to stitch right down here and then do the stem afterward. So I'm just gonna start in the corner here. Make sure that the needle is going just to the outside of that fabric. So we want our needle to go just to the outside of this fabric and cover up a whole bunch of the tree. So just go right over the stem. I'm just gonna go to the corner and stop. And I'm not gonna pivot. I'm gonna leave my needle up and then I'm gonna lift the presser foot and turn. Since this is an angle that's smaller than 90 degrees, if I pivot there, I'm gonna get a really fat crisscross area of stitching that I don't want. So I'm gonna move it down just a little bit. Put my presser foot back down and start again. And adjust that just a little bit. Now you can see we've got a good, well, let's get that out of there. We've got a good point, but we don't have a crisscross X there. Now for this inner corner, I'm again gonna go just a little beyond it and then stop. And my machine automatically stops with the needle up, which is very handy because then I can just spin it. And I'm being careful not to move it a lot because I don't want a lot of extra thread coming out there. And then put that down a little bit too far and then start. 
the tree is all done now we just have to do the stem so I'm going to start this one right here and I'm going to be taking a couple stitches on top of my prior stitching and I'm going to go all the way off the edge there now I'm just going to turn it around and do the other side from here Now you're going to want to trim all your threads because the background is solid cream and these threads, which are dark, might show through. So I'm going to trim every one off. Then we're going to take this paper off. Now since we used such a tight applique stitch, the paper is going to rip right off. So just pull a little, it'll come right off. Now I used thread that matches the trees. And I think that looks really good. And I used a fairly wide stitch. You could use a slightly narrower stitch if you like, but this outlines the trees. Let me show you the front again. This outlines the trees very well. And we're gonna now steam press it so it's nice and flat. And then we're gonna applique up all the trees. Now that we have all the trees done, I'm gonna lay them out and I'm probably going to mix the colors up a little so it's a little bit light dark light dark so my quilt is going to have four trees in every row and there's going to be five rows and i'm going to put this little teeny sashing between all the blocks and these very small cornerstones which i cut from the scraps of my trees but you could do something else if you want so that's going to be right between everything there. And this is also going to go on the outside of the blocks. So to stitch all these together, think of this as one row here. It's going to be just trees and sashing. This whole row is just going to be trees and sashing. And then the next row is this one here, and it's going to be cornerstone sashing, cornerstone sashing all the way along. Once we get all the rows done, we will sew them together, and it's actually a lot easier to use the cornerstones than to just do a long piece of sashing because you can match everything exactly and you won't get your tree rows moved a little bit. Now, mine looks Christmassy because I've got these red color for the sashing, we've got the red for the sashing. If you don't want it to look Christmas tree, if you just want it to look like a forest, use a brown here or use a green so you don't have to put the red in. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch up my rose, stitch up the quilt. I'll probably put a border on it, get it quilted, and then I would love to show you what it looks like. Here's the finished tree quilt. Now we're calling it Ponderosa Pines. It's definitely a pine tree. You could make it more or less Christmassy depending on the fabrics you use. So even with this little bit of red, it doesn't look completely Christmas-like. So you could use this year round, which is one of the reasons I love it. And all these different patterns, this is one of my favorite trees right there. And I don't want you to be scared about doing appliques. I don't do a lot of applique quilts, but this one went really fast and was really, really easy. The sashing was cut one and a quarter inches. So it's only three quarters of an inch right now. And that seems to be the perfect size for the scale of this quilt and these trees. I've got a four and a half inch cut border on it. Again, with this print, it just looks great. The backing, almost a plaid, but that's a batik. Really, really fun. I, I excuse me, I quilted this in a pattern. It's actually got pine trees and stars in the quilting and that was really fun too. Now if you want to make this particular one look more Christmassy, you could add some little um, sequins or some little crystals. You could really brighten this up. My quilt came out 50 by 61 and you could easily make this bigger. This is a great size for a wall hanging or for a throw, but if you want to make a bed size, just make more trees. I only used 20 of the um, layer cakes. Most layer cakes come with 40, so it's real easy to make this bigger very quickly. 
Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the Ponderosa Pines quilt. We hope you enjoyed it. Now we're going to have another giveaway. We've got a beautiful little quilt here. It's called Amber Waves of Grain. This is a rail fence and it's in just really rich earthy tones. Great for fall. It's got some leaves on the back. So to enter the giveaway, follow the link below. Click on the link. That'll take you to our website. All you have to do is enter your email address and your name. And this is open to everyone worldwide. Good luck.